we are waiting for them. We are. We want to be on time. Yeah, we could really. Yes. Twenty. Okay. Yes. Okay, so hello once again, and thank you once again. Uh, we keep going on the GTK and GNOME topics, so the next speaker is Guillaume. Uh, he's going to talk us about the GTK RS crates that has been mentioned before. So applause is for him, and let's go. So hi, everyone. It will be... Uh well, Jordan made uh, some kind of introduction, so I will be able to be uh, a bit faster at first. So let's begin. It will be about uh, last uh, developments in DJK RS and what uh, we intend to do like for many uh, next year. So first, uh, who am I? So I am mainly uh, a Rust reviewer and contributor, part of uh, two teams there. And uh, I'm also uh, the current uh, GTK RS uh, organization owner on GitHub. So, yeah, now you have a pretty much good idea of uh, what is a GTK RS, but let's go over it again. So, uh, the point of GTK RS is to provide uh, bindings uh, for most uh, GNOME libraries, uh, in REST, of course. Uh, the point is to bring uh, safety and uh, more usability over C libraries uh, in REST directly. Pretty, it's for now a goal we have. We are moving uh, forward. So let's start uh, with the newest uh, developments, mostly since the uh, last uh, for them. So if you were there at uh, the last for them, maybe it will uh, be of uh, some help. I don't know. So we just uh, talked about uh, ETK by uh, Jordan. So uh, we added uh, a binding for the ATK. Uh, we felt uh, it was like a miss, so now it's fixed. Uh, just uh, like uh, Jordan had said, uh, it's uh, an accessibility toolkit uh, library. Uh, I don't know, we hope to be able to uh, make it more integrated into GTK or to be able to have it by default at some point so people don't have to provide uh, extra efforts to uh, provide uh, accessibility to everyone. So another big thing is what uh, the, a crate to test uh, user interfaces because we never say it enough, but testing is good. Not adopting, but whatever. Uh, we call it a GTK -R test. It's pretty easy to, uh, to use. Uh, it was started by uh, Anthony. At the time, it was uh, used to test uh, Realm for those who know it. So we just uh, improved it uh, and modified it a bit in order to make it work for GTK RS as well. So, uh, as you can see, uh, I don't know. yeah, you see my cursor. So, uh, in here, we just uh, create a, a button. We uh, give it a label, so it will be called button because it's nice. So, when you click on the button, uh, we will uh, switch the label to clicked. Again, uh, so much for originality. So, uh, so here comes uh, the interesting part. So, with uh, the GTK test create, you will be able to send a click event to your button. Then, because we want to be absolutely sure, because we don't know what kind of server is running this test upon, everything fine? <laughs> <laughs> so, we want to wait a second to be sure that the label has been updated, and then we just check with a nice uh, micro uh, we added as well uh, that uh, the button uh, label has been updated. We also added the continuous integration for macOS because well, we are supposed to, suppose, uh, to uh, support Mac as well. And since I'm mainly using Mac, uh, it's nice too. So, uh, thanks to Travis, I guess. So here come uh, the interesting part. So API improvements. So, of course, we have a lot more functions generated. I will may maybe go back to that uh, later on. We improved the debug implementation for Enum Metli. Now we have a variant uh, printing uh, correctly, which was a bit weird before, but now it's working fine. Uh, someone last year asked about uh, the support uh, of future for uh, async functions uh, in REST and GTK REST. Well, now it's uh, there. So 
if you want to test it, it would be have a, fine to have a field box. Uh, we also uh, added a huge improvements of uh, glibs uh, channels on the main uh, context type. And uh, of course, we had uh, a lot of uh, bug fixes and everything. But that's not everything. We added uh, more into bonds. So now you can uh, have uh, some uh, nice uh, calls. So for those who don't know the into trait, the point is uh, to be able to, uh, instead of having to pass uh, none and sum every time uh, you give something, you still have to give the none, but for the sum, I uh, should have a right uh, code example. But you don't have to give uh, to wrap uh, your uh, string into sum, and the same goes uh, for the types, uh, just like you showed uh, in here. So the parent in here doesn't need the sum. If you give it, uh, it will be automatically uh, converted inside the function directly. It's mainly to make uh, users' life uh, a bit uh, easier and more fun to use. But we also added uh, the, disp uh, the display trait. So it's funny because it's mostly used for debug. But uh, yeah, so now if you create a, a widget in here, a button again, and you print this widget, it, its type will be showed just like uh, you, be, uh, you can uh, see it here. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, we, since we rely a lot of uh, automatic uh, create uh, and code generation thanks to gear. I'll go back to that uh, later on. Uh, you can absolutely uh, disable uh, this uh, trait implementation. Uh, I think it's mostly GStreamer who is doing that because they have some specific uh, display trait implementations. So I will let Sebastian talk about it later. Uh, yeah, just the, to the whole talk of uh, Jordan was about it. So more and more applications uh, are being uh, written uh, with GTK REST and in here and Rust more generity. So just like uh, he uh, talked about uh, Fractal, Podcast, uh, G-Radio, which is uh, still a work in progress, and uh, Newsflash, we written from a field reader, work in progress again. And it was just most uh, famous, let's say, uh, GNOME application. I know that uh, there are a lot more applications. Uh, uh, it was Clyde, I think it was the name. A lot more. So another thing we added, because code is not everything, uh, it was a frequently asked a question section. So we had uh, some uh, questions being uh, asked uh, quite frequently, actually. So for instance, why are releases so long? So currently, we have a pace of around two releases a year. So you will have uh, this answer on this page. I recommend going it uh, to there. Uh, some interesting uh, information are there. OK, so now what will come uh, next year mostly? And maybe further, we'll see. So of course, uh, again, uh, more API improvements. So functions uh, with callback generation. I had to rename uh, this feature because my name wasn't appreciated. Uh, less clones of uh, strings. That was, uh, you can already test it actually, thanks uh, to gesturing type. Uh, the whole point of this type is uh, when, for instance, you return, uh, you get, uh, you, we, uh, oh, in the example, we were checking uh, the label of the button. So when you get the label of the button, you don't need to modify the string, so you just get a, const, uh, a constant pointer. So instead of cloning it into, uh, into a string uh, in Rust, you, we just keep uh, a reference to it and then just provide it to the user. As long as you don't try to modify it, uh, things will go fine. And of course, uh, it's uh, something for the long term, but object inheritance uh, will, be, uh, will be a big thing. For now, it's, I think it's only very nice in uh, C++ binding. Don't know uh, for the other languages, maybe Python as well. Don't know. Um, the uh, thing we went uh, into uh, currently was uh, with uh, the into trait, we realized that uh, too much uh, into trait usage was making user life a bit difficult for user callbacks, in, for instance. So we'll talk, uh, well, in some parts, uh, as long as the type uh, is uh, simple, you won't uh, have to worry and uh, still have the into traits. 
but for signals and the function with for callbacks, it's very certainly that we will remove it because it's complicated in, in case uh, you don't want to provide a callback, it will be known and uh, you can't, uh, well, you need to provide to the compiler some information about the type you were supposed to give and it doesn't work very well. And uh, since I was talking about functions with callback, so you can see uh, the nice C code in here, which becomes uh, some uh, nice uh, Rust code in here. So just like I said, uh, there is no into. Very, just like I explained, because uh, you need to uh, tell the compiler that uh, you want to give something like this, which for now is just generic because fn uh, is a trait which means that uh, it's a closure or a function, actually. And uh, you can't uh, really give uh, this information if you don't have it, as simple as that. So the compiler at least uh, won't annoy people with that. So as you can see, uh, you don't have any more the data. It's, uh, since we have a closure, we don't need it because uh, you can just give it to the closure directly. And uh, the destroy uh, parameter is gone as well because uh, it's uh, handled uh, internally directly by GTK Rails. Now uh, the data is destroyed directly by us safely. So, so function with callback. So just like I said, we don't allow user to pass uh, destroy closure. We remove the user data parameters. We handle lifetimes nicely. I didn't talk about that. Uh, in here, for instance, uh, since uh, this function can be called uh, way later in the code and you're not sure that your parameter will be alive at this time, you have to make it uh, static. So anytime the function wants to be called or will be called, the object will still uh, be alive and, uh, well, it's the mostly handled with uh, reference content and uh, cells. Mostly, so yeah, uh, we have uh, multiple uh, handling of this. So, for instance, if uh, you have uh, a callback, so for uh, I recall on tree view there is a sort function. So, if the fun uh, the sort function, uh, well, the sort function won't use the closure afterwards, so you don't need uh, something to be static. That as well is handled mainly uh, by GTK REST, and uh, the type uh, becomes uh, fn uh, mute. As simple. Okay. So yeah, the almighty gear. I mentioned it uh, a bit uh, earlier. Uh, it became the cornerstone uh, of uh, the GTK RS project. Like we have literally every crate we have that are generated uh, thanks to it, uh, with the exception of Cairo, which is uh, because of uh, the gear files not being very uh, nice up to date. Uh, we can't generate using it. Uh, since the last year, uh, we had 10 contributors, and well, now it's a bit more than uh, 110 commits, but that's still a lot. And more and more projects are depending on it. For instance, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, Lireb uh, RSVG is uh, using it as a library. That's uh, fine for it. Uh, uh, maybe I will give a bit context of uh, how we gear works. So you yeah, have a, a little program on the GNOME side, which uh, reads uh, the, C, uh, the C code, as simple as that, and generate uh, an XML file uh, explaining uh, how, uh, how and what uh, it is. So, can I see? Yeah. So, for instance, this function, uh, the page funk has to be uh, alive for a long time, so it has uh, uh, the parameter will have a kind of uh, Closure will be, you have three kinds. It's notified, async, and uh, another one, uh, which means that uh, you can have it uh, in an even longer time. Uh, you have uh, this, which is marked as being a part of uh, the closure, which quite, uh, is uh, important. And this uh, destroy is marked as being uh, the destructor of this one. And just like this, uh, you can, uh, thanks to this information, which is quite complete, generate literally everything. We use uh, gear uh, uh, to generate the documentation as well. So when uh, we say uh, the almighty gear, it's literally uh, thanks to this project that uh, GTK RS is uh, able to uh, be alive now. And uh, it's, uh, 
starts to get a bit old now because it has been starting in 2014, if I, I recall correctly. So we're starting to have uh, already uh, code uh, depths, <laughs> which is not so good. We come back to that. So GTK uh, RS environment, because uh, code is nice and everything, but uh, you have also humans behind code. So a few numbers. So currently, the GTK RS organization has uh, 29 crates. So yeah, and we are not counting your GSTMR crates, which means uh, that uh, it will very certainly uh, grow up uh, in the next year, depending on uh, how many cr new crates we will be adding. Uh, that's actually a question that has been asked a bit uh, frequently, so I go back. So currently, no, we don't really have a process to accept the new crates and stuff. So we just go as uh, if people uh, bother us uh, enough uh, with uh, one crate, uh, we just uh, end up uh, generating it and uh, handling it. But uh, as you can see, it's a lot of crates, making uh, uh, every release uh, very long. Currently, it takes almost up to uh, two days because you have to confirm that uh, every merge uh, is uh, working as expected and you have to wait uh, for continuous integration to end up uh, testing everything. And when you have uh, 27 repositories, it takes hours at least. Uh, and yeah, those uh, 29 crates are uh, mostly shared between uh, 27 repositories, but that's not all because uh, we also have to handle uh, documentation in its own uh, repository. So in those 27 repositories aren't just GTK RS uh, crates, it's also, also uh, tools and uh, very important elements uh, required by the project. So for instance, I was talking about uh, releases. It's uh, a tool on itself and uh, we have to use it uh, every six months or something like that. And uh, to test it is quite a nightmare. For now, we don't have a very good solution. If uh, one has one at some point, I'm very happy to hear about it. And uh, since last first them, we had uh, two new releases. Uh, the next one, uh, well, we'll talk about the, the next one later on. So that uh, require a lot of automation and we really like uh, to have more of it. Uh, a job I had before was to write uh, a bot to handle uh, merge queues and everything. And I started uh, working on uh, a new one uh, to uh, repeat uh, the same thing, uh, but uh, this time for GTK RS. We'll be, uh, well, we have great use of it because for now it takes most of my time uh, lately, even more when uh, doing releases. Um, so for instance, uh, when you have a, a new uh, gear uh, update, we have to regenerate uh, most of the crates, which takes a lot of time. So generally, you end up uh, reviewing uh, 14 crates or something like that. Uh, it's, it takes a lot of time uh, to, uh, for contributors, for reviewers, for well, literally everyone. So this bot uh, will be uh, able to help on that, to run test, uh, to uh, maybe uh, add a bit of in intelligence into it and uh, check uh, if uh, something uh, isn't going fine. But that's mostly me dreaming. Uh, yeah, help uh, to new contributors because if we have uh, more tutorials and maybe uh, how to, where to start and everything, I hope that we'll uh, bring uh, new contributors. We definitely need uh, more help on this. Uh, thanks to ACFEST, uh, we have already some help and I hope it will continue. Uh, and of course, much more. So we'll see uh, what uh, to add uh, in this bot. For now, I think it's already a uh, nice thing to have. We'll see uh, when we uh, have a, a start for it. So continuous integration, like I said, uh, is very bad currently, not because uh, of, uh, well, we have a test, not as much as I'd want to, but we have test, which is already something. Uh, we have, uh, however, a big issue. When uh, I was talking about uh, gear updates, you have to regenerate every crate. So you have to be sure that uh, with the new update uh, of a crate, uh, all, of the, all of the crates are working. So for instance, uh, if you update your glib, you have to check uh, GTK uh, isn't uh, using uh, other API or have a surprise. And uh, when you update a glib, generally what happens is that you break literally everything. So you have to 
merge everything and then uh, pray very strongly that uh, you didn't have uh, a bug that you didn't spot and when everything works uh, you just uh, check uh, with examples and if examples uh, are building then congrats uh, we are done on this update so let's start a new nightmare I guess so a solution will be to make it more clever so instead of uh, having tests running everywhere we will have uh, to center uh, centralize everything into uh, uh, one uh, server or something and uh, at this point uh, it will be um, oh, sorry. <laughs> at this point uh, it will be uh, way more faster because you don't have to make uh, everything again and uh, it will uh, update uh, to have uh, the last version of everything and you will just test once and for all and you will do uh, one review but it's yeah. For now, uh, I don't know how to make it happen uh, in a multi-repository uh, context. It's not uh, a lot of things are still up to debate. If someone has solution, very open to it. So, I think that question has been uh, asked uh, to me like at every talk I did. So now I will just uh, skip question and answer it for you. So things to be done. So. Before having a 1.0 uh, release, uh, I'd like to have a full inheritance uh, support. Of course, uh, like, uh, yeah, it would just be uh, awesome to be able to have something at the same level as uh, the C++ bindings, to have your own button doing a crazy thing, like uh, you click and you have a unicorn or something. Uh, continue to work on performance. Uh, before this, uh, the last release, uh, we didn't have uh, much talked about it. And uh, I think it's a very important uh, part of uh, GTK RS. And uh, if performance is on here, user uh, won't be here as well. So not very good. Uh, we definitely need uh, to improve internals. So I was talking about a uh, gear uh, which was uh, getting old. Definitely, uh, we need to improve it at some point uh, because well, it's an inner drug. But uh, we have uh, gears uh, separated in three parts, something that parses the uh, gear content, then uh, you generate uh, some uh, AST, and then from that uh, you generate the code, and uh, that last part is uh, the trick we want because uh, when you add the conditions over conditions, well, no one knows what's happening, but if it's generates something looking good, you just hope uh, it won't be a dark magic anymore. Yeah, And uh, of course, uh, I think it's Currently, the, big, um, the biggest uh, pain point is that uh, documentation isn't great because we use differently the seed documentation. We uh, improve it a bit. I don't know yet how to make maybe uh, automatic conversion of uh, this documentation directly for Rust. We'll see. I don't know for now. But uh, yeah, definitely more tutorials because some uh, Rust users uh, don't know GNOME and uh, some uh, GNOME users don't know Rust. So we can make uh, the best uh, out of the two. So yeah, we are getting close. We are not there yet, but let's uh, speak about uh, that last year, next year. So next three is uh, <laughs> well, since uh, we have uh, landed uh, the big, uh, I will call it user callbacks, but you know it's Sebastian. <laughs> uh, now we can uh, have, I think, the next release in the next two weeks. We'll see if we have some last minute uh, hidden bugs or features someone uh, definitely wants. Uh, the VG wanted something on G. Yeah. We'll see. So thanks for listening. If you have any questions. <laughs> Uh, so the question was, is there any uh, documentation for the code generation? Let's say maybe. I don't know how you can. Uh, no, it's on the gear repository. We have a description. And uh, I started to write uh, a full tutorial on uh, how to do you uh, step by step, uh, how to generate everything. I didn't finish it yet. I don't have much time. But next uh, Axfest, I think uh, I will do that. It will be uh, in April. So. Be a bit patient. In a few months, uh, it will be here. I will make a big announcement uh, in uh, Reddit for that. So, other question?